All right. I need you to think and I need you to think really hard about this. It's a challenge. Here's the challenge. Think of a place or thing or whatever you want to call it that is not man-made, so it can't be made by humans, where inside that thing or inside that place, water is not moving. Okay? So any place on Earth, the entire planet, name a place where water is not moving. I'll give you a minute to think about it. So what you should have been doing is thinking about a place on this planet where water is not moving. Now, I said it cannot be man-made, so no water bottles, no big giant reservoirs or anything like that. It had to be a natural place. Some of you probably said, you know, a river. No, water's always moving in a river. A lake. No, water's moving in a lake. I mean, when the wind blows, the water moves. The ocean, we have waves. That's, nobody should even guess that one. Maybe somebody said a pond. Well, here's my question. Or even a puddle. If you have a puddle of water, it's there one day and it's not there the next. What happened to the water? Do you think somebody came and scooped all the water out of the puddle with a bucket and drunk it or something like that? Because they probably didn't do that. So, what happened to the water? Very simple. It moved. The water moved from the puddle and it went someplace else. And you're probably like, wait, water doesn't have legs, so how is water moving? Well, we're about to find out. Water has the ability to move and it actually is constantly moving in the troposphere. The troposphere is the layer of the atmosphere that you live in. So any part of the atmosphere where there is weather, that's the troposphere. Okay. Now, water is always able to move because of two things. One, gravity. And two, sunlight. Now, gravity should be self-explanatory. If I take water and I pour it on a hill, it's going to kind of run downhill because the gravity is pulling it down. Simple. But the sunlight one is a little different. But it's easy if you think about it. The sun is hot. So think of it like a stove. If I put water on a hot stove, the water heats up. And when it heats up, it moves out of that pot and it floats away as steam. Steam is still water. I'm going to say it again. Steam is still water. And ice is also water. It's just water in a different form. Now, back to the sunlight. As the steam floats away, the water is moving out of the pot into someplace else. Think of that in a bigger scale. The sun serves as the warming pot or the hot stove. It warms the pot up, the pot being the planet Earth, and the water moves from the bottom, which is where the ground is or the ocean, and it floats up. So what's up? Well, the atmosphere. When water turns from a liquid into a gas, this is called evaporation. Now, this is not the only way that liquid water can turn into gas, like steam, or water vapor, which is the technical term. It's also possible when water comes out of a plant. When water comes out of a plant from a liquid and it turns into a gas, it's called transpiring, or transpiration, or transpire. 
And what that means is basically the water evaporated out of a plant. Evaporation occurs when you have water on the ground or in a lake or a river or a pond or a puddle or it could be a cup on your dresser for all I care. When that floats out as water vapor, that's evaporation. But when it comes out of a plant, it's transpiration. So what causes the water to float away as water vapor is the heat energy from the sunlight. And that's called thermal energy. Heat energy from the sun is called thermal energy. And so when thermal energy hits water in its liquid form, it causes the water in the liquid form to move like the Jeffersons on up and it evaporates or it transpires out of a plant and goes into the atmosphere. Now, here's the question. The water vapor gets into the atmosphere. Now what? Well, it has to do something called condensing or condensation. Now, typically you see condensation on a water bottle. If you take it right out the refrigerator and it's cold and you sit on your counter, you notice water starts to form on the outside. Some people have even said when I was a kid that the water bottle was sweating. No, the water bottle is not sweating. The water bottle is having condensation form on the outside of it. Now, when you have gas water, so water vapor, turn to a liquid that's called condensation. But what if it's really cold? Like as you go into the atmosphere, higher up, it gets colder. Well, it crystallizes. It freezes and turns into an ice crystal. This is called crystallization. And so crystallization and condensation are basically the same thing. They turn gas water or water vapor into either a liquid in the case of condensation or a solid in the case of crystallization. Now, this happens when the water vapor in the atmosphere touches something. If water vapor does not touch anything, it will stay in its current state, which is a gas. But let's say the water vapor bumps into a particle of dust or a particle of pollen that's floating around. It will turn into either an ice crystal or a piece of water, a water droplet. And this will happen high up in the atmosphere. Now, when these water droplets all form up or when these ice crystals all form up, they form clouds. But the clouds would not form if there was not dust in the atmosphere. Now, what you need to know is what goes up must come down. And so when something comes down, in the form of some type of water. So it could be solid water, such as ice. We call that hail when it falls from the sky, H-A-I-L. Or maybe solid snow. Or maybe liquid water rain. Or maybe freezing rain. Or sleet. Whenever any of these forms fall from the sky as either liquid or as solid ice, this is called precipitation. Now, let's get one misunderstanding out of there. Dry ice is not a form of precipitation. Dry ice is not even regular ice. Dry ice is not made from water. And since dry ice is not made from water, it cannot precipitate and it cannot fall from the sky. It comes from carbon dioxide. Moving on. Now, it should be obvious what the driving force behind things falling out of the sky is. It's the same thing that pulls you down if you jump up in the air. It's called gravity. I told you earlier two things 
make water constantly move. The first was thermal energy, which is sunlight. The second was gravity. All right, so gravity will be the thing responsible for causing precipitation to occur. It will allow water in any form, whether it be solid or liquid, to fall from the atmosphere. And obviously, when that water falls from the atmosphere, it hits the ground. Now, does it just stay there? No. Gravity continues to work. And gravity will cause the water to move downhill towards the lowest point. On this planet, the lowest point is sea level. That's why everything, you'll hear elevation, oh, it's 5,000 feet above sea level, you know, 100 feet above sea level, because sea level is the lowest point on the planet, and it's flat and even all around the planet. Nothing is lower than sea level unless you're underwater. So all water flows to the lowest point due to gravity, which is sea level. Even if water goes underground, underground water is flowing towards sea level. All water on the ground wants to naturally flow and find its way towards the sea. So let's review. The things that move water are gravity and sunlight. Water is always moving. When water turns into a liquid, excuse me, when water turns from a liquid into a gas, this is due to the process known as evaporation or transpiration. When water evaporates, it floats into the atmosphere. When water transpires, it floats into the atmosphere. And this happens because thermal energy, thermal energy from the sun causes it to move. Transpiration means water comes from out of a plant. Now, once that water reaches the atmosphere, it either condenses or crystallizes. And when it does that, it does it with the help of a dust particle in the atmosphere. When water condenses or crystallizes in the atmosphere, it can come down as a liquid in the case of condensation, such as rain, or it can come down in a solid form in the case of crystallization, such as snow or hail, which is ice. Water will never come down in the form of dry ice because dry ice is not made from water. When water falls out of the atmosphere, it's pulled down by gravity, and this is called precipitation. When water reaches the ground, it will flow downhill towards sea level. Even if the water enters the ground, it will want to still flow naturally towards sea level. If you learned from this video, if you found it enjoyable or entertaining, useful, feel free to leave a like. In fact, I would appreciate it if you did. It really helps encourage me to continue these and it helps support the channel. If you don't, the water will stop moving and we'll all be thirsty.